I mean, I'm not going to give 10 business cards today, so you better rush for them. Should I put a price on it? That we uh, it's up to you. You pay the beers. How many do you want? How was this? It's pretty many. Okay. I, I traded control. one here. No? Oh. Okay. <coughs> so I, I, I only have 15 minutes. So I, will huh? I got 10 of this guy for what? one card. Thank you. 10 crowns? No, 10, 10 business cards. <laughs> well, that's a good trade. Uh, yeah. uh, okay, he might get, yeah. So um, I have 15 minutes to talk to you, so I'm going to be super quick in the talking part because I really want to go to the practical aspects of my presentation today. My whole point or the point I want to make is that it's very, very easy to prototype things and try out things, and that should somehow help developing business for other people, unfortunately, not for me. But first of all, I have to tell you who are sponsoring my research in the last six years. Look at this, memorize the images. Okay, done. I'm in the end here to represent Arduino. Arduino is right now incorporated in Boston. Um, and it's a project dedicated to prototyping. But we are here today to talk about, we started when we started in 2005 with Arduino, we were asking ourselves this question about how to bring a digital world to interact with a physical world. And the thing is that the reason why we're in this talk here today, basically, is about the Internet of Things that's trying to ask itself the same question. How can we bring the digital world to interact with a physical one? But based on the different constraint, that is like, okay, now we have a whole lot of technology. And as Mon said, we have a whole lot of technology that can actually talk over the wireless network at a very low price. What, what does this mean? So... <coughs> Let me tell you that in my eyes, uh, and actually I represent uh, Malmo University's research studio, Medea, we understand that there is two main possibilities uh, for this Internet of Things to happen. It doesn't, they, are, they are not excluding each other. You know, probably both will happen at the same time. The first one is that there will be objects that will be connected at all times. It's like Mon's door lock. You, he needs his door lock to be connected at all times. He needs to open the door for Anna when Anna forgets her keys, for example. And the second possibility is that we need networks that exist when we are there. You know, it's like you might not be interested in having some of your information to be shared or to be available for any reason online when you are not home, but that you get it when you're home. I'm going to show you two examples. The first one is this earthquake detector made by Sebastian. He's 14. He's probably not the average teenager in Chile, but he has 40,000... Uh, Twitter followers for his earthquake detector. He made it with one Arduino board, and um, that is constantly connected to the, to the internet over an Ethernet port, and this uh, quake alarm that they had home. So he basically hacked the quake alarm to Twitter uh, directly when there was uh, an earthquake about to happen. These detectors can actually predict uh, an earthquake. Um, the second one is not made by a teenager, it's made by a by a multinational called Google. I don't know if you're familiar with that company. But uh, in March this year, they presented a whole bunch of applications on how your phones could connect to the physical world. And they actually use one of the Arduino circuit boards that we design with a small alteration. And again, this is talking about how you are might be interested in networks that only exist when you're there. Like the bike at the gym is actually a sensor network. It detects your pulse rate, it takes how, how hard you're cycling, et cetera, et cetera. And you are only interested in that data when you're there. This is, a very, this is a very simple example, but you can expand this example to a lot of other cases. I mean, I'm bringing you these two examples because they are super easy to understand. People try to think about these stratospheric examples of like, yeah, I want this network with like, I have a sensor, I measure the temperature and measures, I don't know, if my water is at the right uh, level in the swimming pool, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, this is like, much more down to earth, especially in Sweden where we all go to the gym twice a week, aren't we? Okay, maybe not me. So, <coughs> which are the challenges for the Internet of Things from our point of view? Well, the first one is that we need design tools. And uh, as an Arduino co-founder, I am working in creating those design tools. We, we know we are not the only ones, but we are some of the ones. Second, as Mons explained, we need to change the current subscription and roaming models for the data. You know, we cannot expect that somebody buys an alarm clock that is going to download the weather forecast every morning uh, on your, by your bed, and that you have to pay 10 euros a month to Telia to get that alarm clock to work. You want to pay 
20 years for the alarm clock and you want it to work the next 10 years, for example. That means a change in the data plans. And the last one is how, how we can, can we configure all these networks? I mean, we need to be able of configuring them from our personal device, which is going to be a phone. It's not going to be a PC. You know, the PC is facing its way out for many people. So we need to think on how to design for a different kind of interface. I mean, not designed for users to use a game. It's designed for users to configure their life. This is the, the big difference. So when it comes to Arduino, Arduino is a, it's an ecosystem of things that is pretty simple. It has circuit boards, it has software, it has a lot of documentation, and it has a very strong community of users. Right now we have 51,000 registered active users that are contributing in our system. When it comes to the boards, you have a very broad ecosystem. Today I'm, gonna, I'm going to prototype with two of our boards live on stage. And we have a lot of interest on our website. People come to our website when they want to create new things. Right now we register an average of about 45 million hits a month. So this is quite a lot of data. I mean, you can't imagine how many people want to, to, want to trade links with our website. You will have realized we have like no ads on it. And uh, also, if you are thinking, I mean, I don't know how many of you are business people or designers interested in selling ideas, but if you're thinking about which are your potential markets, I can tell you that according to our statistics, the potential markets are obviously the US and the European Union. You know, green represents North America, yellow represents uh, Europe, but mostly represented by the European Union. And if we gather all our users, of every 100 users, 40 are from the US and 40 are from uh, Europe. And Asia is starting, but they still have three more years to reach the same level. <coughs> so I'm going to make two demonstrations. One is going to be a wireless PICO network, which is the idea of like, okay, I have my device, I have a phone in this case, and I'm going to control something with it. And the second one is going to be a ping machine for which I will need those business cards. You have them? Thank you. Wow, I got a lot of paper. <laughs> We can make a nice bonfire later on. Um, you know, Sweden is famous for the barbecue. So my first example is going to involve an Android phone, like this one. It's going to involve a Bluetooth-enabled board that I'm just going to connect here. Imagine this is the light in your living room. The lamp, okay? This is the lamp. It's a very small green lamp. Uh, by the way, I forgot the cable to connect my lamp to my control system. This is how my lamp works. I will just put it here somewhere. <coughs> Don't look at it yet, it doesn't really matter. You will need to look at it later when it actually blinks. <laughs> and I will just keep this ready here. And everything I'm going to do now, I'm going to do it live. So it's like, in no, by no means you can say I'm inventing anything. This is happening here now. Do you believe me? <laughs> <laughs> well, if I fail, you can throw me some cake later. I think I double-clicked this thing. I'm not really sure. Yeah, I double-clicked it. Yeah, even though I double-clicked it, it didn't really work. Can I close things? Okay, thank you. That will help. Uh, here is processing. <coughs> okay, great. So the example I'm going to show you now, I'm going to control the intensity of this lamp over time with my phone. And the idea I want to, I want to present is very simple. I'm going to show you the interface of that my phone will, will carry, mostly because I don't know if the guys in the last row are going to be able to see in my screen, right? So this is the thing that you're going to see. This is uh, just a graphical representation of the circuit board I'm using. And this is what I call a, a time slider. It's a slider that allows me to set up, if I press the mouse yeah, like this, how I want the light to fade in different levels, right? And when I will press play, it will just play back this light pattern. 
Okay, this is something that actually things like your phones allow that your current interfaces don't allow. You know, this just this is a good excuse to design something with a touch screen. If you just if you use a dimmer, when you use a dimmer, you have to like be there to change it. If you use something like this, you can actually program how things are gonna change on time. Okay. So here's my phone. I will plug my phone. Oh, there is a lot of USB things connected. Do you mind if I unplug something? There is like a USB stick. Can I just pull it out? <coughs> sorry, sorry to bother you. <laughs> okay, in the meanwhile, I will tell you <laughs> this in your next speaker. Thank you. So, uh, in the same way, I am, I am having this program running here. I will have the very same program running in, in my phone. The only difference is that instead of telling this thing to uh, get started uh, on the screen, I'm going to tell it to just look for the phone and install itself on the phone. But it's the same, same program. You know, and what it's going to do is to connect to this word over Bluetooth, and when I press play in the button, it's going to just send that pattern to this guy here. So you get the idea on how long it took me to make this program. I was just waiting for to catch my flight one day that was half an hour delayed at Kastrup, which means it doesn't take that long. So I will just open the code, which is this one, and I will just say run this program on the phone. And while the thing gets loaded on the phone, I will just turn on this circuit board. And I have to tell you, I didn't have time to rehearse this thing uh, because I was eating cake. So it might just fail miserably and I will look super bad in front of you. But since I made it two days ago in front of a thousand Chinese people in the audience, I don't really care. Okay, it actually failed. This happens sometimes. Let me just uh, unplug and replug. <coughs> and I will try to do it again. Run on the device. attention. Come on, baby, behave this time, huh? Okay. Oops. Okay, since I have so little time, you know what? I'm not going to try it again. I'm sorry. You have to trust me on this one. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I, I try to... <laughs> I tried to make this demo with my computer. They insisted I need to use a different computer. But you know what? It should work. And it's in it, since it failed, I invite you to watch the Ustream from the conference I had last Saturday. So my second demo that I, I expected to work, <laughs> because this one I actually did try before I came here, consists in a prototype that I'm building up together with Telefonica of Spain. I don't know if you're familiar with Telefonica. Telefonica happens to be the second telecommunications company in the world. And even if we are just a very small open source project that is made by five people and a huge community of users, Telefonica has kindly agreed on helping us out in, uh, <laughs> look at this, accept. I'm just breaking your computer, guys. I'm really, really sorry. So uh, Telefonica has, has agreed on uh, financing the development of this circuit board, which basically allows us prototyping a lot of different services on the M2M business. What I'm going to do now, if everything allows, is to choose a couple of these volunteers to get random SMSs from my computer. So, so you get the idea. We try to make things very, very simple. So send an SMS should be as easy as writing this line you see on the screen right now that says, GSM dot send SMS. This phone number, please forget about it. It's the guy from the control room. By the way, did you get an SMS right now from my phone? You should. So, <coughs> oh, this is Britain? No, Sweden. Mobile, 0709 mm -mm. mm -mm. 
let's respect privacy. Oh, it's on the screen. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, it's Macintosh. It's Apple C. Oh, this guy gave me 10 cards. Very nice, Pablo. <laughs> uh, oh. So basically what I'm doing here is just to tell this system to very quickly send messages to all these people. I'm going to just choose three, okay? And you can tell me if we became friends or not. If we didn't became become friends, then I mean, I'm sending you my phone number because it's actually sending you an SMS from my phone number. Uh, is that right? Three, three, three. Okay. So I just send this to my board. We just make sure I have the right Arduino board connected. And we send it. So this program, you're not going to see any weird interaction on it or anything. Basically, if it happens to work, three of you will get an SMS that says Arduino SMS and then we are friends, okay? Again, about the, the story of this device, I mean, Telefonica of Spain, of course, uh, they don't think they're gonna make a lot of money by us selling these circuit boards. They just think that if somebody using the circuit board happens to design that alarm clock I was talking about a while ago, then they will make a lot of money because they will have to close, uh, to make a deal with those people for them to sell the thing in their country. Was that an SMS? You got one? OK, great. At least this part of the demo worked. I can be happy. Thank you. Um, this is the presentation software keynote. No, sorry. <coughs> this one? Yeah. Shift Apple F. I'm really not a Mac guy. So this was, this was all I had to explain you today about uh, how we see the Internet of Things. Just remind you that there is two different methods we are working with, as I said. One is the devices that are constantly sending things. I made a demonstration on something that works over the ESM network because we believe the ESM network is going to be the omnipresent uh, network that works everywhere in the Western world to make devices. And we believe that it will be possible for any of you to just design a device in Sweden, manufacture it, and ship it all over the world with international rate, uh, rates that will not cost your, uh, your company so much. You know? uh, and the other possibility is the personal networks that will continue to operate through our personal device and only exist when we are there. So that's it from my side. Thank you.